Hello, um, I'm Joyce Dunbar and I write children's books and my new book is this one. It's called The Boy in the Jam Jar and that's my name there because I wrote the story and that there is says illustrator by John Shelley and John Shelley has done a wonderful job of interpreting this story and expressing the feeling of it. People ask me what inspired me to write this story. Well, because I am um, I, I'm deaf and that can feel a bit like being in a jam jar because there are invisible walls around you. And so, and, and there aren't many books about deafness. And there need to be more because the deaf children need more choice of books. The other inspiration is this picture. My son began to go deaf as I did at the age of five. And he drew this picture of himself inside a bigger self. And there's very big ears because he was losing his hearing and he looks ever so lost and sad inside there. So that's a big part of the inspiration. There are very few books for deaf children and deaf children, it is very hard for them to learn to read because if they can't hear, they can't speak, especially if they're born deaf. So they really need all the encouragement and all the help they can get. They need to see themselves as a hero in a book. The dream, it was early morning Dylan was having a strange dream. He was in a jam jar, just big enough for him to stand in. His mother looked at him in the jar. He waved and shouted, but not a sound came out. His mum smiled and waved back. He tried to climb out of the jar, but the sides were too hard and slippery. Then Dylan woke up. He was in his own bedroom with his toys and posters of the planets and jug model rockets. Phew, that was a horrible dream. Now everything would be all right. But everything wasn't all right. Outside, a blackbird was singing. The traffic hummed and hooted, but for Dylan, there was just an eerie silence. So I've made this a bit of a thrill. It has an exciting, dramatic ending. And people will say, well, a deaf child can't be a hero, but a deaf child can be anything. So, so I, I hope you will want to read on to see what happens. Next door, my neighbours have a dog called Pluto. And when I was writing this story, he came round here one day and ate my lamb chops. Uh, I, I, he's awfully nice, but <laughs> it was my dinner. <laughs> and, but he's a lovely dog and I thought he'd be perfect for this book. Pluto burst into Dylan's room, leaping joyfully upon him, tail wagging. And yes, he could feel Pluto and smell him and even hear the bat of his tail against his legs. Hello, Pluto. Come to see me. I'll give you another biscuit in a minute. <laughs>